Hey guys, I put together a little short video on setting up your carburetor. Uh, I see online a lot of guys are asking questions. Uh, they've taken their carb off, they've cleaned it, or maybe they got a new one or something, and they put it on their bike, and when they start the bike, the bike goes wide open. They, they panic, they start adjusting screws, uh, turning knobs, and uh, don't do that. That's, that's not the problem, more than likely. More than likely what you've done is when you put the slide in, you put the slide in 180 degrees out. And the next little clip that you're about to see is kind of explaining why that did what it did how to avoid it and uh, how to check your carb that it's not going to get a, you're not going to get a runaway when you fire it up uh, i always try to remember it doesn't always happen but i do try uh, turning one off is just as important as getting one to start up so keep that in mind next time you have your carb off uh, thank you for watching i do appreciate it i know a lot of the stuff is basic beginner stuff but we all have to start somewhere uh, if somebody didn't show me or if I didn't take the time to go figure it out, uh, I wouldn't know it. So hopefully these videos, you know, put together on these three wheelers to help new guys out and girls too, that, uh, you know, just get out and learn. Put you, get your hands dirty. You'll figure it out. You, you really can't mess them up too much. And if you do, they can just about always be fixed. So keep that in mind. Watch the videos. Hit the subscribe button. I appreciate it. Y'all take care. All right, guys, I see a lot of posts online, people asking questions about I uh, took my carburetor off or put a carburetor on and I turned my bike on, I fired it up, and it went wide open throttle. And uh, they don't know what's wrong with it. They, they, they start turning screws and they start making adjustments. Uh, no, 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 don't do that. So you just put your carb on, means you took your carb off, means you pulled your, uh, your needle assembly out. And uh, when you put it back in, you put it in 180 out. So I'm going to go real slow here and explain this. Um, on one side of your needle here, you have where you put your steel cable, okay, for your throttle cable. On the other side, you've got this ramp. And that's exactly what it is. It sits on the right hand, it faces the right hand side of the carburetor. And your fast idle adjustment screw screws into that opening. And as it screws into that opening, it actually raises the slide upward. You see with the ramp, as the screw goes in, the further the screw goes in, the faster the idle is going to go because it starts ra raising this needle up in the carburetor. It lets more fuel and air, and the carburetor just thinks you're giving it gas with the throttle, with the thumb throttle. But So what you've done is this will go in 180 out. You can put it in incorrectly, and this is what incorrectly looks like. And it sits completely flush, which is, is, is what's confusing about it. You go, well, that looks right. The slide is completely flush with the top of the carburetor. You can force the spring down in there and, and it will look like it goes in correctly, but it's 180 out. As you pull it out, if you look real close, the ramp is on the wrong side. The slide, the, the gap for your, your uh, throttle cable is on this side. It will go in incorrectly. So make sure that this ramp here is on the right side of the carburetor. That's you sitting on the bike, your right-hand side of the carburetor. Line it up with the screw that's your uh, idle adjustment screw. Now when you push this in, if you watch real close, it drops all the way in. And now you see that the spring is not even being compressed yet. The spring is just going all the way down into the bottom of the carburetor. And so when you get done putting your cart back together, be sure and listen. I hope you can hear this. There's a little pop. Hear that? That's that slide bottoming out. I'm gonna put this camera in here. It may go upside down on you. So that's the throat of the carburetor. Chokes open. I want you to listen for the carburetor slide. You can see it going up and down in there probably. Hear that little pop? That's what you want. And then on your throttle here, you want a little bit of play, like. This is probably a little bit too much, but that's what you want. You want a little bit of play where it's not actually moving the slide at all. That way you can bump it without it being too responsive. And then you want to make sure you got full, full uh, throttle on it. Now this is the way this bike came in. This is terrible. Please don't let your bikes do this. Don't, 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 don't let your air filter get this bad, please. You got to wonder how much trash got in that engine. So these, uh, the big reds, there's an inner carrier to this exterior foam element. You want to clean this up, but I'll tell you a little secret. This is one of them yellow air filters, and I don't like them. 
Um, I see a lot of them fall apart. So I like the Uni Red. It's about $5 more expensive for the red ones. And, and I know, don't get me wrong, every little part, every little dollar adds up. I get it. I'm paying for all of this stuff too. Nobody's giving it to me. But for five bucks, it's twice as good an air filter. You're gonna get twice the service out of it. You can clean it up. It's just worth it. Just trust me, it's worth it. Plus it comes with stickers. And you know stickers makes things go faster. So this is your new element. Now I'm gonna clean this up, but I'm gonna tell you something why, why I got you here. A lot of these bikes, you buy them used and this element's not here and this element's like 40 bucks on used online. You can go get one, that's great. Comes with this little bracket here on the back, okay? That's fine if that's what you wanna do. But the Uni filter comes with this internal baffle. It keeps the filter from compressing under heavy acceleration. You can actually put this directly in the bike in place of this. So what you can do is you can take your piece of PVC pipe. I believe it's an inch and a half will clear this. If I have one around here somewhere, I'll show it to you. And you can actually put it over this, put the filter over that. And you see that little lip, that gap that goes all the way around there? When you cinch down on this, you'll tighten up on that piece of PVC pipe. You can take that PVC pipe and you can run it, make it about three inches long. Take the other two inches and you can insert it into the intake between the carburetor and the air box. Is it ideal? No. Will it get you by? Yes. It will work and it will keep the trash out of the engine. I'm gonna run this through the parts washer real quick. We're fortunate enough to have one. When you're looking at a bike, you gotta look for those little things. Little things like this to eat your lunch. Little parts, little nuts, little bolts, uh, lids, caps, uh, screws, all of that stuff adds up. People think, oh, well, I'll just throw it away, it's no big deal. Well, it may not be a big deal to you, but to the next guy, it might be a huge deal. Air lid box, little cover. You go look at a bike and you don't see an air lid on it, one, they've been working on it. Two, they haven't taken very good care of the bike. Three, ask them if they have it. They may have put it in the shed. They may have threw it over there next to the doghouse or something, you know, ask them, say, hey, uh, you know, I'm buying the bike. Do you have any parts that, that maybe came off the bike? Do you have any extra parts? Uh, you know, and more than likely, if it came off the bike, they'll give it to you. Now, I'm not saying somebody's gonna throw in an extra set of tires or anything, but if they've taken parts off this bike in an attempt to fix it, and they've got them stashed over in the corner, they might not be thinking about it. You know, they're excited that you showed up and you're willing to give money for this bike that don't run. So why are you there? Take a moment, take a deep breath, look the bike over, figure out what's missing and ask them, hey, excuse me, sir, do you happen to have that air lid or that gas tank's missing or, or anything? You'd be amazed, hundreds and hundreds of dollars you save yourself by just asking the question. And if they don't have it, that's fine too. You know, you've already decided to buy the bike. That's really not an issue, but it's a bonus for you if they have it. So keep that, those kinds of things in mind. Accessories, a lot of times, are taken off. Racks, hitches, headlights, because the person is, is trying to work on the bike. They, they, maybe they don't know what they're working on. And, you know, they take something off and it didn't go right. You know, maybe like this brake job. They, they tore the bike apart and four hours later, it still ain't working. They give up and they push it off in the corner and, you know, life gets in the way. And uh, they never go back and put it back together. You show up three years later, you know, and you want to buy the bike, great. Ask for the parts. It doesn't hurt to ask. Um, it's even beneficial sometimes. You know, you can maybe even work that into your negotiations. A lot of times, um, you know, your bike, they show you an old picture. I had one one time. I almost drove an hour for a bike that was complete. And I do my little fingers like that when I'm holding the camera. Complete bike. I'm talking to the guy, talking to the guy, and something just didn't feel right. I don't know what it was, it just didn't feel right. And I asked him something very specific about one of the pictures he sent me. And uh, he said, well, well, yeah, it, that rear end uh, was broken. Kind of, you know, raised my spotty senses a little bit. And I go, well, what, well, what rear end's in it now? You know, if that one was broken and you say the bike is complete, well, it, it doesn't have a rear end now. We took that one out because it was broken. 
And I was like, oh, okay. I said, uh, well, can you send me a picture of what the bike looks like now? Completely different bike. I mean, he had tore this thing down to nothing. It, it, it didn't have no tires on it, it didn't have any rims, the tank was off of it, the seat was gone. I mean, it was a mess. And I asked the fellow, I said, you know, do you have all the parts you took off of it? It's, you know, he was selling it cheap. It was a parts bike, don't get me wrong. But when you tell somebody it's complete and you send them a picture that I found out was five years old, that's a big difference than a bike that's a basket case. So I ended up not buying the bike. It was more work than I wanted to put into it for that price and uh, saved me a trip. So little things like that, you always kind of keep in mind when you're talking about negotiating and stuff, little extra parts go a long way to making your purchase price a little bit more reasonable. So I'm gonna pause the camera now. That filter uh, element should be cleaned up and we'll put it in the bike. Hold on. Just as pleased as I can be with this little cleaner. Now, on these uni air filters, what you gotta do is you're gonna have to poke a hole in the end of it. Sorry, that's just the way it is. So, I remove the inside element and I keep them for bikes that come in that may, you know, do not have an element, but they give this to you. You may not have to keep it, but you may have a buddy that needs one. So you take your element, put your big uh, clamp back on there, put your original element back in there, and what I do is I pull it down on my fingers and you can feel right here where that little stud is, where that little nut is on the inside. And you get your trusty pocket knife out. Don't leave home without a pocket knife. Check your state laws, but anyways, if you're less than six inches, I think you're good anywhere. And what I do is I'll just run a little line across there. Maybe make a little X like you do upholstery work. I don't know if you've ever done that or not. You just want to make it just big enough that that other part of the element. I thought it had to be there. There you go. So that's what you're looking for right there. So I'll go ahead and assemble all of this before I spray the filter. I don't know if that's the right way or not. But if you've ever had to put one of these together with a drippy, wet, dirty or you know oil freshly oiled filter you can wear gloves or you can put it in a bag or i've tried all that too there you go just tight it doesn't have to be super tight now i do like to make it look good i'll spin the filter around so you can see the name and i'll do the same for the clip too now i like these to actually face up when they're on the bike so it looks just like that you get the two bolts for the uh, lid that goes on here and I like to be able to get to this. You can go ahead and tighten it up. All right, so here's how I spray an element. The plastic bag, they sold it to you. Keep that, you're gonna need it in a minute. So hold it by some other part other than the filter. And I just try to give it a literal dose, a little, a literal one coat all the way around. I don't overdo it because it will drip. And after you service your bike, you come out the next morning and you see a puddle underneath it. You're going to think you did something wrong. That's what I use. The Uni foam filter oil. So don't put so much oil on it that it's going to drip. Now here's where the plastic bag comes in. This is recycling at my house. If you can use something twice, that counts. There you go. It's a mitten. And then just insert it into the bike like we did. There we go. All right, so now we have a new freshly oiled uni air filter installed.